Okay, we're going to talk about God's presence at work. Everybody turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to go to verse 8. God's presence at work. We see something in the Christmas story, which is amazing. And I've spoken on this several times, but in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, we see there are three things that we uh, can have or that we need to possess in order to have God's presence at work. Now, here we are in Luke chapter 2. Of course, we've, we've all seen the Christmas plays and the little kid on stage recites Luke chapter 2, and it's all exciting, and, and I always love it. And they're like, in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the flock, you know, keeping watch of their flock by night. Then suddenly they're, you know, shown a great heavenly host. And I love that. But it wasn't until I got into the marketplace and started diving as I was diving into scripture and still continuing to read scripture in the marketplace and having this false dichotomy in my heart 15, 18 years ago of, well, I'm not a minister because I'm not being paid by the church. I'm only a businessman. And then as I began to read scripture and I, I just it was it never settled in my heart. And then I began to realize, oh, wait, hold on a second. I am a minister of God. Right. It's just where where I'm placed and how I'm paid is slightly different. And that doesn't discount the office of pastor. Right. That's vital and crucial. But I'm still a minister of God, just like he is. But so I, I began to read and I remember reading this. Oh, this must have been 12 or 13 years ago. And I read verse eight in Luke chapter two. And I was like, that's God's presence at work. Check this out. Luke chapter two it says in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse nine says, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before him and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said, don't be frightened for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people for today in the city of David, there's been born to you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And then goes on, this will be a sign for you. A baby will be wrapped in swaddling clothes. Okay, now check this out. If I... I'm going to arrive on the scene, right? If, if, if John Sherrill is going to arrive on the scene as the guest of honor at a big event, huge event, John Sherrill, here he comes, pastor, Grace Baptist Church, faithful man of God, but he's going to arrive on the scene at the event. Do you think it would behoove him in today's culture to go at 2 a.m. to an Amazon worker who happens to be a janitor, it's two or three of the janitors, they get together in the break room at 2 a.m. over at this big Amazon building over here. And all of a sudden, John Sherrill shows up and there's like, I, I'm, I'm like the leader. I walk in and I open the door and there's three men, three janitors, got keychains hanging off their pocket. One of them still got a trash bag in his hand. And all of a sudden, I'm like, greetings, John Sherrill is here. And he's got a message for you. And there is now hope for everyone in the world. Like, I wouldn't do that. No, you, but you could go, congratulations, world's best cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, that's so stupid. Uh, Come on. Okay. Some props here. It's the season. You got this young dude. He's literally it's like, elf. I'm like, that's elf. That elf. Yeah. <laughs> but, but here's what I'm saying. Is this not one of the most amazing verses in scripture? Just show you how phenomenal God is. He showed up to a group of shepherds. That was the lowest on the totem pole. That was about as low as you could get. And he didn't just show up to a group of shepherds. He showed up to a group of shepherds working the third shift, working the night shift. Do you know that your job has value and it does not matter where you're placed and how you're paid? God loves faithfulness. He loves faithfulness so much that when he revealed his son, the savior of the world, he made the announcement to the lowest on the totem pole. So I want to give you three things that we can learn from this, that we can bring into the marketplace that are really going to help us. Number one, identity. Number two, obedience. Number three, faithfulness. Number one, our identity is not found in what we do. It is found in who we are. Dad's a human being, not a human doing. But I can tell you this, the culture today says your identity is found strictly in what you do. And that's easy for men, especially. Like I'm, I remember when I was with, I got traded from the Red Sox to the Cardinals. And I'll never forget, my wife was an elementary school teacher. And we go to this Christmas party. 
and it was just packed with parents and they're all like, Oh, Hey, what do you do? What do you do? I'm like, Oh, you know, I, I play baseball. Oh, really? You play baseball. And they kind of prod, you know, you throw the little lure out there. Like I'm just play baseball. It's really no big deal. And I'm wanting them to say, Oh, wow. You play baseball. What do you mean? Oh yeah. It's for the Cardinals, but it's really no big deal. Oh my goodness. Next thing you know, you got a crowd around you and I loved it. Six months later, I was legit a janitor at a local high school in Charlotte, North Carolina. But he was a tight end in baseball. Nobody knows that. He just sat tight on the end of the bench every single game. You know, you guys haven't listened. You've all heard that so many times. No, they haven't. That was a brand like a bunch of school girls. Okay, so here we are six months later. Now I'm a janitor, and I'll never forget going to the Christmas party at the school. Not, not at the school, but this was, you know, another Christmas party. And I'll never forget some dude asked me, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, I work at a school. <laughs> you know, I did not want him to prod. All the Christmas parties previous, I have want people to prod because I'm cool. I'm legit because my identity was tied in what I did. My identity was not tied in, into who I was. And so then I remember I did not, I, I still was a janitor. And, and I look back now and I see what God was doing. I had to stay in that job until God broke me of my identity. And I surrendered and said, God, I, I'm going to be faithful to you no matter what. So I'm going to obey what you tell me to do, and I'm going to be faithful no matter what. Now, I remember that breaking moment was a prayer. And, and for the next few months, I really embraced my job. And I didn't just live with the grind, you know, just the old grind, you know. And I embraced it. I worked at it with all of my heart as unto the Lord, not as unto man. And then, boom, everything in my life changed. But I know God was getting me there. So here these shepherds are. They're keeping watch of their flock. Now stop. Whose flock was? It was their flock. Like God gives us all a flock. He gives us talents and abilities. God gives us families. God gives us communities. We're supposed to keep watch, right? We're, it's so easy we can get drunk in video games. You can get drunk in binge watching stuff. or you can. And we're not even keeping watch, especially as men, over the hearts and the souls of our family, right? We're just not even keeping watch or as men of God in the church, not keeping watch. We're too busy giving people pixie stick shots on Sunday morning with bounce houses as opposed to really equipping them in the word of God to stand strong in what potentially might be coming our way. And so here, they, their identity, our identity as believers is not in what we do, but it's in who we are. Number two is obedience. You know, you imagine we think about shepherds and as soon as we think shepherds, who's probably the most famous shepherd, not Jesus, but the most famous shepherd who was a shepherd boy that we all know about in the Bible. His name was not Jason, David, David. See, here's little David. But listen, David gets anointed. Think about this. David gets anointed by Samuel that he's going to be the king. And after the anointing. David was keeping watch of his father's sheep after. And then his dad says, go and bring this food to the battle line. Was David obedient? Yeah. Boy. See, he he didn't take this promise from God. I, I the, Some of these prosperity preachers that are like, you go get the promise. God made you a promise. You go get that promise. I'm like, for heaven's sakes, God made makes a lot of promises. Some of those we don't get until we're dead. Like he made a promise to John the Baptist. John the Baptist is in prison. Why is that dude standing at the door with a bag on his head and a sharp axe in his hand, right? What about my promises? So I'm just saying that here David was, he had this promise of God, and yet he was committed to obedience. He obeyed his father. He, he was just radical obedience. And then God got David where he ultimately wanted him to go. And listen, if you're in a, if you're in a, a, a job that you feel has no worth or no significance, don't feel that. It does. Every single job has worth and significance. And for you scrub young kids that aren't working jobs, you're at school, your homework, the way that you honor your teachers, even if your teacher doesn't really like you, they probably don't like you for good reason. But you honor them. You obey, right? You obey. That word is not very politically correct. I'm not going to obey anybody. I'm my own authority. No, it's identity, obedience. And then the last one is faithfulness. It says they were keeping watch of their flock by night, even when it's hard. Man, that, that third shift, Caleb, Sherry, you remember working at Amazon uh, through the night? That's hard, isn't it? Didn't you fall? Some dude fell asleep going to the bathroom, didn't he? Yeah, Caleb's in the stall. This dude. He's like, he's like, 
we went there. I just sat down there and I woke up like four hours later. <laughs> <laughs> this dude sits in the stall wow. at night and wakes up four hours later. That would totally be me. But it's faithfulness. So it's identity, obedience, and faithfulness, guys. Listen, wherever we are, wherever we are, our identity is in Christ Jesus. Let's obey him with whatever he calls us to do. And let's be radically faithful. And when you're in that position, you put yourself into the presence of God. And he showed up this night. This is the angel. Showed up and made his announcement to those men. Yeah, when you're faithful in your work, you are in a position where God can give you one of his divine visits. Let me ask you this. What were the, what were the wise men? What were they keeping watch for? A star. What were the shepherd, shepherds keeping watch for? Sheep. Whether God's giving you a star or sheep, don't sit there and look, I want to watch the star. That's what the pastors are doing. That's what the full-time ministers are doing. No, he says, no, no, no. You take care of sheep. And when you take care of the sheep, I'll show up. When you keep watch for the star, you don't know if God's got you in the position of the wise man or if God's got you in the position of the shepherd. All you got to do is keep watch over what he's given to you, and he promises he'll show up. In Jesus' name, amen. Done. Okay. All right.